Strike a Chord, Music Chit Chat with your host, Valentino Kikowski. Welcome to the Strike a Chord podcast, episode number five. My name is Valentino Kikowski, and on this episode, we have a very good friend of mine, the lovely and talented Amla Periakarpan. Amla is a multi instrumentalist, and on this episode, we get a bit of an insight on her musical journey, including performing, teaching, and all the instruments that she plays. A big thank you to the Yesteryear Revival, the production team, and Cake Clips for their support. And remember to subscribe if you like what you hear and what you see. Enjoy. All right, welcome to Strike a Chord with my special guest and a very good friend of mine, Amla Perry Carpenter. Is that right? Yes, correct. There we go. <laughs> so Amla is a multi instrumentalist. She plays a damn mean flute as well as a violin, and we have done. A bit of work together and some projects together and um, it's a pleasure to have you on this podcast. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. So um, I wanted to start off with yourself and how you came to be a musician really and, and when you started and how you started and um, how you chose the flute as well. So because the flute is a beautiful instrument and you play it beautifully so I wanted to get a bit more in depth about that and how you know what your approach is and everything like that so where where did you start how did you start oh thank you for (laughs) the compliment um I started with the recorder as most of us probably did that's right yeah you were (laughs) you're you're telling me once upon a time you started with the recorder and I just used to literally I don't even know how the music began I don't know how I had a recorder probably from school and I would Most just, likely, like we all had. Yeah, yeah, and I just remember hearing, watching movies and being able to just play all of the themes on the recorder. And I was probably... Really? All the themes? So you, I was probably five or six. Yeah, I was already ripping them out and I didn't think anything <laughs> of it. My parents didn't think anything of it. So I just kind of floated along and then... The Gee, fl- so you were ripping out the themes straight on the, on the flute? Yeah, yeah. And this well is done. because... Uh, as I found out later on in uni that I had perfect pitch or have perfect pitch. That's right, you do. Yeah, you do. But and at I've, the time. I've, I've been, uh, I've seen that firsthand. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that was interesting. Uh, but the flute, I didn't choose the flute. It, <laughs> it chose, chose me. You. <laughs> uh, because um, I moved to Perth when I was 11. Okay. And Where were you before then? Melbourne. You were in Melbourne. Yeah, I was so in Melbourne. you went to uh, Perth and came Moved back. to Perth, not, um, oh, very reluctantly, but <laughs> went there. You had no choice, you were 11. Had no choice, no. <laughs> and uh, I, I ended up, I got there on the day of some music, what do you call it, music test or something I did in school. Okay. And then I got like a really high mark and they gave me a flute and like here I you did, go. Yeah, here goes. A High mark and a fluke. Yeah. Flute. So, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> fluke. Flute. Well, it wasn't a flute. That's, yeah. that's for sure. But. And so, I guess the rest is kind of history. I didn't like it at first. I couldn't get a nice sound and I found it was a very frustrating <laughs> instrument. For I've me. heard that from other people as well. <laughs> yeah. it, it gets quite frustrating because you need to be really precise with your with your positioning and your blowing of, 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 of the flute as well, like under your lip and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah. And it took me about, I tell this to kids I've taught, like in the... F- they say to me, Miss, I can't get a sound. I, I can't play this instrument. And I said, do you want to know how long it took me to get a good sound? Yeah. And then they realize, okay, you've, it's an instrument. You have to wait for the rewards and really just work at it and work at it. And, yeah, I mean, I've, I think I threw it once in my <laughs> – don't throw your instrument. Oh, don't so. worry. I've, I've thrown a guitar too as well. Yeah. <laughs> I had a frustration. Yeah. Um, but but yes. look, the, the, and, and the way the way you play and, and your style is like, I I see that you 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 can mimic a lot of styles and you can mimic this and mimic that and you pick up things straight away and and it's like I haven't seen it, anyone um, like picking up melodies and, and 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 modes and different things like straight away bang you know it's like how do you, it's like you've got a superpower. You know, it's like a, I've got a mimicking superpower, but it's it, it, it's actually taken a lot of a lot of years of work, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, and I guess I I, I mean I guess the classical music world has helped me in that sense. Being being um no, oh, I guess in the classical world you're really pushed to mm. to meet certain demands, and I studied it at uni, and and it's you a just, very high level. It's a standard. very high level, and I guess in some ways I it didn't help me but in other ways it has and that determination to master become a master somewhat of the instrument which none of us can ever be but that's why I love the flute as well because there's always so much more to learn from it and yep. I'm nowhere near mastering it and I don't know if I ever will be but but you're all, already but psychologically disturbed like we all are with these <laughs> instruments right <laughs> 
to getting to that level to, and then and then you 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 miss things like that are happening around the world like around you oh yeah you, know, all the you time. actually you actually hang on what what's going on i've been so absorbed by my instrument you know you're on lockdown what <laughs> 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 what are you? Why are you wearing a what, mask? <laughs> what, what? There's something. What? COVID. What's that? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, so you, you know, I, and I know you get you get immersed into your instrument. Yeah. But you can really hear it in your playing, and your 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 playing is is not only at that level of I'm I'm playing at this level, but you also bring something else to it. There's a um, like like the Spaniards would say sabor, like a flavor. You know, you you bring this sort of flavor to to the flute. It's not your average flute playing. It's these little little nuances, little things, little things that you 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 put in. You know, and and I don't think you can teach that. That's something that you establish along the way, or maybe you you listen from you you get from listening to others. Am, am I correct in saying that? Yeah, I think so. I don't even thank you for that noticing that. Uh, I'm starting to notice it myself only through listening to recordings afterwards. I think I'm just so in the moment, but uh, I have listened to a lot of different styles of music. And like you said, I like to, I've learned a flute teacher told me, like one of my flute teachers did tell me initially, if you want to be like the best, mimic them at the start and then you'll find your own flavor. And mm. I guess that's what I've kind of done. And I'm that's still, what we all did, really. Yeah. That's what we all did. But, yeah, but yeah. You, you, you actually grabbed it and, and you mimic but you also uh, I've not uh, and, and I'm I'm actually proof of this because we've, we've recorded together and we've played together where I was giving you something and on the fly you think uh, not only do you play but on the fly you just throw something in and you think oh geez that made it sound just that much better you know so <laughs> yeah. and 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 for a musician to have that it's it's uh, you know it's it's ideal to have to work with someone like that so and and it's uh, also like it's it's a bit of fresh air because you you give a piece of music to someone and and they play it right but when you hear the musician not only play it but put something on top and something like that you you're 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 you've got in your head already but you can't relay it to the person yeah. and they've already played it it's like Oh geez, something's happening here. Yeah, something's right happening. So that's that's my experience with with your playing, you know. And I th I think I think it's 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 wonderful, you know. Oh, thank you. But your your approach to, I suppose, n playing different genres. Like I know yeah. you've played with DJs, you've played with Mexican <laughs> bands, you've played with my, with my band, with the flamenco band. You've played you've played with classical trained classical trained people, and and you're always. You're always striving to play with different sorts of genres and different sorts of people. What's what's your approach? How do you cut off one and go into another? That's a really good question. I don't know. I, I think it's just through. I didn't intend to try all these different styles. I was very set in so my comes classical. Naturally sort of thing. Uh, well, it it started off. It was kind of natural, but also not. Like I moved here and I was just planning to do classical music and no other genres. Mm. And then um, I ended up jamming with a guitarist and he said, hey, you want to join my band? And that's how my improv started because I never really improvised before. I just copied. Classically trained though, yeah. you had the improv, right? No, you're not taught that in uni. And now I know they're looking at it now, but. But it's so yeah. much to give when you improv. It shows oh, your character. It's another world. And I'm so, uh, like I find I'm sometimes reluctant to go back to the classical world as well but I guess from the improv um other bands have seen me playing and they've asked me to join them and I've gone oh this is a different style so it wasn't really initially it wasn't um conscious yeah. a conscious choice but now I go oh, okay that sounds cool like that sounds cool and, and and I think with the the classically trained bit it gives you the discipline yes right yes it gives you this, this discipline you know you've got the structure you have to play this piece the way it is right and it's it's there and you need to perfect it mm. to some sort of degree right yeah but then you're so confident with that that you sometimes put it on its head you know and this is where the improv comes in and this is where uh, I, I suppose experience as well comes in because it's not just about playing at home or playing you know in uh, rehearsals you've, you've had a lot of experience playing live with different sorts of people and different mm. get-ups and different setups and everything like that and i think um that, uh, that that's actually a, a good thing and it and it broadens your your your, your playing as well you mm. know because when when i when we were playing together and we said i'll do flamenco you know 
I knew that you, you'll be able to get it straight away. And I think it's because you've actually listened to a lot of things and you've got that sort of, that familiarity, you know, you know that it's supposed to sound like this some, somehow, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think it's like in, in all of our vaults in our heads, we've heard something somewhere and you think, oh yeah, this sort of goes with that. And that's part of the improv, you know? It is, yeah, we do. We kind of hear something and go, oh yeah, I'll, I could... Or you record it even and then yeah. you just take it home That's and, right. and extend or I guess expand on that idea or, yeah. And and that's your discovery point, you know, where you're discovering mm. this, and this fits, this doesn't fit and everything. But on top of you playing flute, you also play other different instruments <laughs> as well, right? So you play violin yes. as well, which yeah. you just picked up. It was yeah. after the flute, right? Yeah, well, the violin was when I started playing it when I was 25, I think. And that's that's odd because a lot of violin players, they start really early. Yeah, when they're four. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, I need to catch myself. Uh, I, t- I try and whenever I play violin, I'm getting better at it. When people say, oh, that's amazing, I always want to say, oh, but I haven't been playing. And then I have to stop myself and go, yeah. okay, just take it, just take it. It just goes to show that. <laughs> Nothing, there's no rule about anything. No. You know, get a get a piece of music and you play it and all of a sudden you're, you're playing that piece of music. It doesn't have to be that you're familiar with this piece of music or you're familiar with this instrument with years, you know. And and, and, and that's very interesting because you picked it up at 24, you said, right? At 24 or 25, one and, of those. And, you yeah. up, and, 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 and now you're gigging, right? Yeah. And it wasn't intended, again, I was intending to just stick to being a classical violinist and maybe playing an orchestra because there's so many of them, surely I'd be able to play. And then I, I tried it and I went, oh, I don't really, oh, it's a bit pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> the musical theatre orchestra, yes, they're quite fun. But I don't know, something about the classical orchestras, I'm I'm more of a appreciator. I'll go and watch the concerts, but I don't really think I'll ever want to play in one again. <laughs> but it's a preference thing and I'm also, uh, yeah, I just started, how did I even start playing violin? Yeah, the band I was in, the same band with the improv, they saw I was playing violin and they said, play the violin. I was terrible. <laughs> you just play the violin. I played, I was really bad. I look at the recordings going and go, wow, that's really bad, but... I'm glad I went through that process in order to get where I am now, playing mariachi music. Well, yeah. look, uh, it can it can never do you bad, right? Learning another no, instrument. No, that's true. If anything, it'll broad, broaden your 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 views and your vision and your soundscape, right? I probably should have gigged that early on, though. <laughs> 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 probably should have spent another year or two um, at home. <laughs> mm, I don't know. I I think you. I think I think you're on the wall because you know what? Going out there and gigging. It'll probably kick your ass a little bit, yeah, but you, you're yeah. actually gigging and you're – so it gives you a bit more motivation to practice more at home. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. But not only that, you, you picked up the clarinet as well and you uh, – yeah. out, of, out of necessity, I think, yeah. out, of, out of, you know, you what had to – project we – yeah. So you, you, were, you, were, you had to teach clarinet? I had to teach clarinet and saxophone. Uh, that's right. And I did – I ended up doing sax- – uh, alto saxophone is a second instrument at uni, like for a unit. And, and that was only a few years ago. Yeah, it was a few years ago. And what was really cool was the lecturer at the end said to me, oh, have you considered continuing on? You could be a doubler in an orchestra. And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was a quick no. It was a quick no. Straight down. <laughs> Straight nah, down nah, yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> I mean, if, if she gave me one, I'd play it for fun, but I wouldn't go down an orchestra path or anything. I, or I, I, I really like the way you you approach things and, and, and you you have fun with them. You have yeah. fun with these instruments. You don't, you, you, you're you not just playing them. You're having fun with them because I, I think you've got a lot of interest in it. You, you, I love it. You, you, you love the instrument. So you pick up and you, oh yeah, this sounds good. This is cool. Well, I played Thanks. bassoon the other day. I'm doing oh, a gig. You? I'm doing a gig on, I can't remember if it's Friday or bassoon. Saturday for bassoonists. We had a rehearsal earlier. And it's such a well beautiful done. instrument, but I want to learn. It just, uh, there's so many instruments I want to learn. And there's so Look, little time. Good, good on you. <laughs> I mean, you, you pick up it and you pick them up quite quick and you can just, just play them. A lot of musicians will kill to have that superpower, <laughs> but good on you because it, it, it takes a lot of effort as well, you know, and a, yeah. it's an investment of, of time and effort and everything and money. like that. <laughs> and money. I mean, I don't think I'll go to a bassoon, but... The idea was nice. It's quite expensive. Yeah. 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 Like um, I, I know even some of the violins and some of the flutes. Yeah, like you were saying flute. about a, 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 a bass flute. 
that you Yeah, I wanted oh well I would love an alto and a bass flute, yeah. but I think cheapest maybe four thousand for oh. an alto. And how many yeah. gigs do you have to do for that? How many oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but look, I, I I'm I'm I really want to know about your approach to arranging. Because you also oh. can arrange, right? You can also sit down and, and, and arrange against this put this here, put that there. So what's what's your approach to, to arranging? Especially because you're in a few different bands and yeah. how do you sit down and arrange your instrument, for for example? Well, to be honest, I used to do a lot more physical arranging with, yep. with um, what do you call it, with note taking and writing out the parts in my 20s. I haven't. I haven't done it for about ten years. <laughs> so it's now you just put press record on the on your phone and yeah. That's and it. when I go to if a band asks me to play, they either have the charts there for me, yep. and then they just say improvise, or I think they just know I can. I think, like you said, I think people just know I can improvise, yep. and they just give me the freedom to do whatever I want. So it's a case of I'm not wearing the key of D, just do something. Yeah, yeah. Well, they don't even. <laughs> they it. just don't tell me because they, oh, really? they know that I know. Yeah. So I just. Yeah. And, and and look, that, <laughs> that is good up to a certain point, and you know you you got your creative freedom as well. But sometimes, for for me, sometimes yeah. it gets a bit much. Yeah. If someone says to you, "Look, I've got this. These are the things. I'll do something," and then you do something, and then oh, it's not this, it's not that. I think it's important when you're telling someone like yourself to. Give them just a bit of what what you think, what your what what your ideas are. This is why I love working with you and performing and playing with you because you give me the ideas and you give me more guidelines. It's and not the as loose. Yeah. There's a structure there. Yeah. In the last gig I did, it was very loose, and I didn't know if what I did was what he wanted in the end. Yeah, and and yeah. this is the thing, and and some musicians probably won't won't tell you if they liked it or not because yeah. of fear of offense or this or that, or maybe yeah. they don't know themselves. But I, I think. With 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 great talent and power comes great responsibility, right? Mm. So you need to be the way I see it. You need to have some sort of an idea in your head of how you want something to sound. If you're going to tell someone to, oh, play here, play there. Yeah. If it's a jam, it's a different story. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. You know, you're jamming if on it's this. It's a right? concert. Like, yeah. If it's a gig, then you you want more. Or of even that. if you're at a rehearsal and you don't know, and you're jamming on some chords and things start to come up, mm. and no one knows what's going on. That's a different story because you're, that's when the collaboration starts. That's yeah. what I think anyway. But if you've got a set thing and you think, oh, I've got these eight bars, what what can Amla do in here? Maybe this is the chord. Maybe she can do this, this, this. And, this. and it makes the things easier for you. Yes. And, f- and for everyone else, you know. Yeah, exactly. So with with all of that and all, <laughs> all your, you know, all your background in music and where do you see how, – how do you see um, – I suppose the, the the Melbourne scene and 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 mm-hmm. and the flute playing and and everything. I know flute playing can be part of the world music scene here in Melbourne, and you've you've done a lot of that. What's the next step for Amla in her flute playing? Where do you see this and and possibly violin playing? Where do you see the next step? So um, so that that question, I think that was that two questions. It so was the, two questions. Yeah, the Melbourne scene. <laughs> yeah, the Melbourne scene <laughs> and your next step within the Melbourne scene. Yeah. The Scene's an interesting scene. Uh, I can't say I know it very well because there's just so many genres and styles yeah. of music, so many venues to explore. I'm just discovering. I feel like I'm not even halfway through mm. w- what there is to offer. Um, but I saw. I just what was really cool. What I've noticed is there's this um, group. I think they're called Awkward Science. I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay. They bring in different jazz musicians and other kinds of musicians, and they bring them in for a concert. And it's all improvised, so they don't actually know oh, what they're going to do. Cool. I saw them once, and it was so mesmerizing. And there's a leader, and he has like a whiteboard, and or blackboard, and he writes down chords he'd like them to play, and then he'll just oh, really? get them to vamp it. I think you would really enjoy it. I think I, I think you, you should go and have have a, have a watch and have a. Well, have I think a you could be a part of it because they just <laughs> find different musos to join in, and literally he just gets them to vamp, and he'll point at the chords. He'll writing new chords and then he'll while they're vamping the, yeah while they're vamping Jeez, gotta, and then they just move this to out. the it's so cool it was really and then he adds the vocals and then it's just you so just don't know what you're going to get he's he's a human sequencer yeah <laughs> yeah essentially Jeez, that's but, yeah, exciting. They change location every month, so. Jeez, you got to get me onto this. Yeah, yeah I'll have to well, see what's going on. Yeah, I reckon you could definitely I mean, join. We them. Both could. 
Yeah, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. It was very jazz, so I need to. That's a, that's a genre I haven't fully explored. Oh look, uh, <laughs> we, jazz is very open. Yeah, so we that's can probably true. put our five five Bob Earth into that genre, yeah. you know. <laughs> but that's that's. Yes, I've noticed there's a lot out there. The Melbourne music scene, yeah, it's. Oh, I really don't know enough about it. I mean, I I think I need to explore it more. Mm. I noticed that there are. I notice I've been hanging with particular, like I see the same, starting to see the same, same people, people at the same, same venues. Musos. So I'm ready to find new venues and yeah. um, I'm exploring new styles with my own solo stuff as and well. And that's the best thing you can do. Go out there and explore, see what's going on, with what, what's happening, what's what, what they're doing. And I, I, I've i seen that parts of Melbourne, different parts of Melbourne have their local sort of like musos. Yes. Like your north part, your northern part of Melbourne have your musos and then you've got your eastern part they've got different set of musos there your, your, your south south part is different your west have got different sort of lo- local venues and local mm. musos and, and and it's all different like there are different style of musicians and you get m- your like more rock towards your south eastern sort yes, of style definitely. and then you got your more world around the northwestern you know and, and and I think going to seeing seeing all this you cost money because you know you have to drive <laughs> and everything like that but it's 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 a good it's a good thing to do you yeah, know yeah yeah i agree definitely there's just so much out there like you said it costs money as well so it does, you it does. <laughs> pick so, your bands right now i'm kidding <laughs> so w- what have you got on now i'm low what, what what are you working on now what projects are you doing yeah, so I've been doing more looping, like um, one noticed. one woe man band, I guess you could call it, with my, I'm just literally just improvising a you're lot. Doing, with you're doing quite well too. I've, I've listened and I've watched some of your videos. You're doing quite well. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Like I, it's still, it's still new for me, but I just, I find it very fascinating. I don't know what I'm going to do and um, I do a lot of live concerts on this app called Insight Timer. I've got like a little following there. Okay. So it's like a meditative, because my music's kind of ambient at times. So um, yeah, every, at the moment I'm doing a live every Thursday and I use that time to, they donate money as well. So I use that space to give them a little one hour concert and it's all improvised loops. Nice. And I just add the darbuka and vocals. I'm doing, I'm doing more vocals with it. Just lay, I'm just layering sounds and exploring that. And Um, having perfect pitch helps. Yeah, it does help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's 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 good. Now I know yeah. I wanted to ask you about your technique with the whistling. Oh and, uh, yeah, yes. The, the how, how do you call it? the whistle tones? Whistle tones. Yeah. Now I know you were experimenting with that a couple of years ago when we when we started. Yes. I think. And where are you, where are you with that? Because I, I thought that was a, a very unique and a, and a great sound. You can like it's like you got a, a, a two people playing the flute. Yeah, yeah. So um, when I when we were when I was experimenting with it, I learned it actually learned it from my teacher at the time, and okay. she was saying it's a shortcut to getting a nicer tone, oh. like um, to shortcut like spending ten hours on wa- flute warm ups just to get a nice tone. Okay. And I just initially did it for that, but now I'm discovering there's within each note there's like four at least four to six or more whistle tones Jeez. and it's quite fascinating because it's so subtle with the embouchure the, yeah, yeah. the movement and it's taken me a long time to get to where I am now with the whistle tones but it's just I just use it for warm-ups but you I could incorporate it more into pieces yeah, probably could because you got you said yeah. you said five six variations right yeah like this, so um, you can different combine notes. yeah you could yeah. combine like different note within each uh different note different whistle turns with Within in each note, yeah, it's really cool. I still I'm still learning about them. Yeah. Look, I think I, I think it's um, great technique to have because you can all of a sudden you can put something in that you know something with, with those whistle tones. You can yeah. actually incorporate it into some of your ambient music as well. Yeah, definitely. You know? Just in the background. I mean, let me see. Maybe I can see if I can. All right, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See if you can. I know you haven't warmed up, but go for it. <laughs> it's a bit cold here, so. There were three on one note there. I didn't get all the way up, but that was. Um, but that's that's, with a, a, that's a technique, right? That's a technique, yeah. Awesome. So, with in between, I suppose playing with 
with the flute and violin and and possibly anything else. Do you find that you get m more work? Lately, like yes. Yes. I mean, in the past it's been – I guess now I'm getting more work because I'm promoting myself a bit more. I didn't really – this is the thing I'm noticing – if you want to be a musician these days, yeah, you, you've you, got to promote yourself. You have, and yeah, and, and I said it reluctantly. Because yeah, look, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I, I never like promoting myself, and I, you know, it's like blowing your own whistle. But yeah, yeah, you got to do it, right? You got to do it. That's, and then that's you the got the social why. media part of it. it yeah, gives me anxiety. It's not a discussion to have, but um, yeah, I suppose playing with diff different instruments does it help getting different sort of gigs and more gigs with other bands and other things, or is it just purely I'm gonna play be playing flute, and if I if I think I'll play the violin and I'll play the violin, well, do you, do you get calls for? All right, I'm like I need you to play a flute on this gig. I need to play a violin on this gig. Do you get do you get that? Is it is yeah, I get both. Mainly, I get calls for specific instruments. Uh, mainly violin these days. Okay. Yeah, although the flute's creeping back in slowly. Because, yeah. I think I, you should. Yeah, oh, I love. Don't get me wrong. The yeah. violin is is a great instrument too, but the flute. Yeah, I really want to do more with the flute. Yeah. It really it really goes with the guitar. Yeah, it really know? does. Yeah. yeah. Especially with flamenco, with flamenco, it's been well, Paco Lucia brought it in with yes. with Jorge Pardo years and years ago. And a lot of people were against it at that time, but it was oh, he was the pioneer, that. yeah. Oh. He was the he was the pioneer, that, and, and they made some great albums. You know, it did it did did fit what he was doing. Yeah. And and now I think it's I think those recordings are ahead of their time as well because not everyone not it, he was the pioneer. No one no one did it, mm. and all the so called purists said, "Oh, what's this? The bringing of." The bass, the flute, the, what are they going to bring in next? The cajon. And so they did. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And a good thing at that. Uh, yeah, that's good right. Thing they did. <laughs> so, but look, I, I mean, I've, I've had the pleasure of playing with you, and, and I know you're a person who likes to do their homework and likes to be prepared as much as possible, you know, at gigs and, and, and at rehearsals. What's your regime when you what 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 is your necessity? What do you want to have when you're when you're getting ready for a gig or getting ready for a new band or a new you know what what is your go to? What do you what do you need to have? I need to have the I like to listen to the recordings. That's the number one thing for me because as you know we're adulting in life and yep. sometimes we don't have time to physically practice the instrument. Yeah. So for me the number one is recordings. That's how I learn a lot of mariachi songs. Yep. Alejandro doesn't know this, but I do. He'll, I don't practice as much as <laughs> he would like me to. My practice is mentally like I I'm driving to the re rehearsal, yep. listening to the songs I need to know. Yeah. And then I I'm very I'm getting better at it through. Doing that a lot, I'm getting better at just memorizing the songs through listening to it. So. so, do you find if you don't have charts, yeah, do you find that listening to these and, and learning the, these things is a gets a bit lengthy at learning them, or do you find the, you, you learn these these songs or the material fast if you have charts? I probably learn it faster with the charts, but I I think because especially with the mariachi group um, Alejandro is against sheet music for okay. this like we've got to have it all um, up here in the because see, you want to feel it when you're playing it you yeah. want to be confident you want to feel that exactly yeah. which, and which, I've which gotten I'm, used I'm to it for. me too and I think I've just gotten used to learning the songs by ear yep. so he did send me charts for some of the songs and I don't look at them now yeah. it takes me it does take me longer to learn it by ear but I feel like just having it in the car and I'm Doing this thing, I don't know if you know James Morrison, the trumpeter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I've read well, I think, like an. I think everyone knows James Morrison. The yeah, trumpet. there's two. There's a singer called James Morrison. So yeah. Oh, uh, I know yeah. the trumpet player. Okay, great. <laughs> 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 uh, I was reading his autobiography quite some years back, and he talks about how, like, he tells a story of how he manages to learn how to play a double bass in his sleep because he was. Um, Mentally mm. practicing in his sleep, and I've noticed it. Work, I find it works for me. I mean, it's a bit radical, but by I'm practicing while I'm listening That's to it, like imagining the instrument and the notes and where I'm placing. I do, them. I do that too. Oh, you do that too, yeah. But it's logical because your actual your brain works in your sleep. Yeah, and it's proven, right? Yeah, it is. So yeah. it works probably more than it does when you, in your subconscious when you're conscious, right? Yeah. Even though sometimes we're unconscious in our consciousness. Yes. <laughs> sometimes it depends when you've been too too many late nights of practicing and yeah. the guitar but or not practicing or not practicing <laughs> but 
everything. I think you're right in your sleep, and 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 this is not only for 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 music, no, but when you're studying, exactly. You when you're studying up late and and you're exhausted, you need to stop, go to bed, yeah. Get up in the morning, and you you, you absorb things. I think much better, mm. and you start. It's a bit more clear, and I think I find that even with meditating, if yes. I go and meditate, I, I I'm a bit I'm a bit more focused afterwards. So yeah. I'll, I'll probably be recording. I'll be recording for two, three hours and nothing's happening and it's like frustration. I'll go meditate for a bit and I come back, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That was shit. That was shit. That was shit. Record the whole thing again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, but it does bring things in perspective. You're right. Yeah. Um, and it's a quicker, I just find in today's day and age, I'm not, I used to practice four hours a day in uni. Now I'm lucky if I yeah. get five reality, minutes right? sometimes. You yeah, that's know? the reality of it. It's the reality. Know? So that's, it's another way to practice and it's yeah. training the muscle, like you said. It, and yeah, I'm because then you've got these other things like life. As well, that interrupts <laughs> your I, music. I have, what, what life? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, because us musicians, we sometimes get ex- we exclude ourselves from that part because we're yes. too much Im- immersed into our. Yeah, we're a bit you know? introverted in that sense. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and then life happens, and you think, oh, I've got to deal with that now. So I can't, yeah. re- I can't rehearse for eight and a half hours a day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, unless so, someone pays me, I'll be happy to rehearse eight and a half oh, hours if, a day. If you get to the point where someone pays you, you're very lucky. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But. You, I, th- I think in in all you know in all fairness we all want to be as good a musician as we can be yes, yes and balance it out with the life that we have yeah you know um and it can be hard can it can be. be hard yeah especially if you have a family and mortgage and everything and all of that but there's always something just poking there's you know <laughs> The musical demon, you know, just poking yeah. you. What are you, you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? You know? So I think we, we all get we get at that stage. But mm. I think the most important part there is to have colleagues and musician friends around just having a bit of a chat about it, you know? Definitely. Sometimes. And having a jam at the end, which is normal. But sometimes I think it, it helps because if I find that – other uh, people that are not in the arts sometimes can't understand where you're coming from, you know, intellectually or if in your mind what's happening. Yeah. Um, and not not all the time, but sometimes, you know, it's – and this is where you can have a chat with someone that's, you know, even even the artists have the same same sort of dilemma sometimes, mm. you know. So whether it's a musician or a sculpturist or your painter or something, you know. It, you have that that one thing where your mind's going a hundred miles an hour sometimes, and you can't sleep at night. Where, you know, it's going, it's going, it's going, going, and then you wake up in the morning and you think, "I feel, I feel buggered." Yes. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And, and you, you so many things going in your head, arrangements for this one, for that. Oh, this piece or that piece, and then it's three in the morning, and it's just like I can't, you know, I, I can't do this anymore, you know. So, and that. That's that also plays a big part, you know, in 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 your day to day life because if you've got a job that you have to go to as well, yeah, and it it, it does impact it. It you know? does, and you've you've been in that situation. You've yeah, had I mean that situation still. <laughs> 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 I mean, to a lesser extent, but I have less money too. So yeah. you've got to you've got to look at the you, you've got to find the that balance, balance. exactly. Balance. Yeah. Because I know I know you were teaching full time at a at a, at yeah. A, a, at a school, yeah, you know, um, and that's got its own challenges as well. It does, so and I was uh, my colleagues w- were brilliant musicians in their own right who decided to give up the gigging scene, mm. and I got to a point where I had when I got to the point where I thought, well, should I be performing anymore or should I? And I went, oh, I want to perform. I can always teach later on down the track, but the performance, I, d- I don't know if I could always do that as you get mm. older and. And your hands don't work as well, and your ombrage is not as yeah. good. <laughs> so, uh, that, and that's yeah. an interesting thing that you brought up: to teach or to perform. Can you I do know, both? You can do both, um, but not as a full-time teacher. No. I feel, but do you reckon yeah. one takes away from the other? I think they can complement each other if there's a balance. Again, like mm. what you said, a lot of the teachers that I was working with were doing it full time, and I was on four days. And I couldn't find the balance, mainly because of the admin and yeah. the marking and the lesson prepping as well and concerts and camps and all those extracurricular activities. Yeah. 
And then it just tore, it took time out from my uh, practice time and from gigs. And, yeah. it's, and it's funny you should say that because now to perform, you need to do all that admin as well. You yeah. got to do social media, you got to market, you got to promote, you got to do this, you got to do that. And you're taking up more of your rehearsal time and music prep time. Yeah, it's true. So yeah. it's the same sort of thing I find. It is in that sense. I guess I don't mind as much with the, I mean, I prefer not to promote myself, but I feel like because it's aiding, know. it's aiding um, what I'm doing. And I guess, yeah, there is that admin though. Yeah, You're so, right that and, and that's where we, we think, uh, well, maybe years and years ago, we thought as a performer, wherever we play, they're going to promote. Yeah. It doesn't work like that anymore. Unless you're like, um, I don't know. Oh, uh, like a big name. Yeah, big name who you pay, you pay someone else to do all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, so, <laughs> and that's, that's, yeah, that ain't going to happen all the time, right? No, so, no. But again, that's your balance and, and it's challenging to do both, whether you're a teacher or you're a performer. Yeah. It's, it's, it's got its own challenges yeah. and, and I think what, what the good thing is, is that you learn. You learn, yeah. You, you know, you overcome some challenges and you learn, you take your learnings from that, whether you're performing or you're teaching because I, I, I used to teach like private lessons. I found that it was um, absorbing a lot of energy. Yeah, it does. I mean, you have to bring that energy for each student as for well to student. create the excitement and enthusiasm. And, That's right. And I mean, I loved it. I loved teaching. I just needed to take a break as yeah. well because like you said, you're – you're using up a lot of energy. You are, and, and the psychological part of it as well. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, you're you're always exposed to the students. You know, you're always, you know, giving and your and teaching is just in general is this challenge, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then when you get students that need more attention, you need to concentrate on them a bit more, but not. Uh, but you also need to feed the, the students that are doing quite well as well. Yes, you know? finding being able to cater to all of their needs yeah. at the same time, and that's 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 challenging. And you yeah. did you did that for a, was a couple of years. Um, yeah, one school was there six years, but I guess I've oh, been teaching years. for twelve years. Jeez, that's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of teaching. Yeah, it's a lot of teaching. <laughs> she gets long service leave. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't stay at one school. <laughs> so you got to be at the school seven years, and I yeah, left at yeah, six yeah. years. Oh, jeez, you just you just <laughs> I missed couldn't it. wait. You couldn't wait. <laughs> But look, I mean, look from a performance perspective, I, I, I think, you know, you're, you're, you're treading new ground as well with, with the projects that you're doing. Yeah, I am. <laughs> you know, and I think, I think that's a good thing. Not, not a lot of people will do that. They, if they're comfortable in what they're doing, they do what they do and that's it. But I think you're, you're pushing your own, your own boundaries, you know. How, how are you finding that? Do you find that, you know, it's, it's something that is – there's, there's some gratification there or is there something that's giving back to you or satisfaction or how, how are you finding that? I'm finding it really interesting. I'm noticing that some people, like some of my musician friends are questioning me, questioning me about oh, really? my new project in particular with the, with the electronic music. Yeah. They're questioning whether it's, it's just, you know, it, whether it's taste, like there's, there's these interesting, okay. not, not everyone, just a few particular people and then. Um, but it's good to have that as well. It's good to have that as well because then I'm obviously, like you said, I'm pushing the boundaries yep. and I'm actually quite enjoying this project. It's different. I'm not playing as much and that's what I've been finding challenging. I've got to allow for, because there's three of us in this project and there, it's there's a lot of music. The music's already filled with a lot of different parts. Yep. So I need to um, allow for more space and to be okay with just, um, I guess, it's a good challenge for me in a sense because I've got to listen to the music and look for areas where I can okay. add. It's more, um, I guess, nuances. I'm not playing like a whole bunch of notes. Um, just Sometimes I'm just adding effects and okay. more ambient kind of vibes. So it's very, it's a very different, um, different endeavour for me. Yeah. So it's not a lot of shredding. It's no, no, I'm used to shred. Yeah. <laughs> I'm shredding. Shredding. used to shredding. Yeah, I know. I, I like to shred. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, yeah, but, so, uh, yeah it's, it's just sort of like really subtle shred, sh subtle shred, and subtle timing, shred. and In, timing. Yeah, here, I need there. to find the right placement. Sometimes I pick the spot where the beat drops, and it's the wrong spot. So yeah. it, I'm learning on on the on the job. It's a lot of its life. So it's 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 quite rewarding. It is. It is. I'm actually learning and growing, and it's a completely different style for me. And it's been. Um, 
challenging, but in I'm realizing, wow, this is actually good for me. I'm learning um, that I don't need to shred all the time. <laughs> and look, <laughs> I, I, and, and shredding is good, but not all the time. Not I, all the time, I, no. I, I used to do it, and, and now <laughs> sometimes I get fed up of me hearing and listening to myself, and this is why I like playing with bands and playing with people because yeah. I get to listen to them. Yeah, know? that's true. And, 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 and I know with the flute, you can't accompany as much. That's why I guess I got into the habit of shredding. Yeah, <laughs> but it is a solo instrument, yeah. right? But there are some things where you can... You can accompany and you can blend in, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's only, it's up to the musician themselves and up to, you know, how you're approaching, what you're, how you're seeing things. So, yeah. But I, I think, I think that's a, that's a quite a good challenge. It is. Know? And being able to take the feedback as well. Uh, yeah. It's Feedback's not, it's always not my, challenging, right? I'm yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm, it's I'm I'm open. I'm definitely open to receiving more feedback. I yep. find sometimes people are too polite, and I want to yeah. know the truth. Yeah. I want to know if yeah. something's not working. And, or... and sometimes, and it's not it's not out of how people are just like that. They don't want to. They don't want to offend. They don't want yeah. conflict. They don't know much about the person that they're talking to, which is fair enough. You know, yeah. you don't want to go in there. You don't know this person. You want to tell them their crap you know, <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> in a good way. But I think uh, it, the people that are close to you that know you and if Yeah, I they, want them to tell me. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And yeah. That, that's that's the criticism that, that you want. And mm-hmm. you want that criticism coming from people who who know about the criticism? Yes. Not some like someone oh, just out of the blue, oh, nah, you know, oh, that's crap. Why? I don't know. It's just crap. You know, you don't you don't you don't want that sort <laughs> no. of feedback, right? But no, it's not I helpful. Think, no, yeah. it's not helpful. Feedback is good when they tell you the, the, this is the feedback. But not only that, but they tell you how you can go about making it better. Yes. You know, if, I love that kind of feedback. Yeah. yeah. So maybe this didn't sound good. Maybe if you try this at that place or that, you know. That's the constructive criticism that you want. Yes. That's the thing that you work on. You think, oh, okay, maybe it works, you know. But if they say, nah, that didn't sound good and walk off, I think that's the worst thing you can do to a musician or to an artist. Yeah, and then you know? you're like, what What didn't sound good and why? Like, you, at least... Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like, you know, you, you probably get that from, from, from a kid that doesn't, you know, ah, you know? but yeah. from from someone who, you know, he's, he's probably in, in that industry or is a musician or even part of, the, part of the public, you know, part of the normal public. I've mm. had people come up with, look, it sounded good, but maybe maybe the guitar sounded bit weak here or that yeah. and i've had it coming up to me and, and i actually i'm i'm on board with that because i'm playing for them yeah you know yeah. and and i don't mind that at all no like and at that, least they're being truthful exactly yeah. and i said look i'm not a musician but i did hear a bit of this and that's actually i take that on board because you're mm-hmm. listening to it i'm playing yeah. it but you're listening to it yeah you know so and, and that's 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 what you want to hear as well you know, and yeah. yeah, feedback can be a double edged sword sometimes, you it know. It can be, yeah. I guess I got, I learnt how to, I mean, it took me a while in uni and the classical world, they'll definitely give you feedback, <laughs> a lot of constructive criticism. And I think every day is a feedback, isn't it? Criticism. Every day you get feedback, yeah, yeah, like every, every day, daily, every single day, yeah, yeah. what you're not doing right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yes. a bit of an overdoing it, but yeah, you gotta find again balance, balance, yeah. 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 Well, Amla, thank you very much. We'll wrap it up there. Thank you so much for being on the Strike Record podcast. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure and hopefully we do more projects together. Yes, please. Thanks um, for having me as well. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I'd like to um, also thank the venue um, Yesteryear Revival as well as my production team, Roland Ciara. Um, shout out to Cake Eclipse as well for the lovely cakes as well. And um, yeah. we can have a drink. Yeah. And then we'll um, have a bit of a jam as well. Thanks once again. Thank you.
Hope you enjoyed the Striker Chord podcast. Be sure to visit valentinoflamenco.com to access more podcast episodes, news, and other projects that I'm currently working on. Thanks for listening and watching.